So I asked you guys what you wanted to hear about, and a few of the responses were, why don't you tell us how the RV is coming along? So the backstory with that really quickly is that I bought an RV a while back, and I got it on eBay. This was a bad life decision. First off, let me just say, don't make a large purchase online, sight unseen. In this particular case, the guy lied. The photos that he posted were obviously years old. He said it was in great condition, it ran like a champ, you know, he babied it, he used to be a mechanic, all this stuff. No. Just a few great examples. It hardly run. The company that had shipped it from Washington State called me and they said, we're not able to have you come and pick this thing up. We're going to have to charge you an extra fee to drop it off to your door because I don't think it's even going to make it like the next town over. So it barely ran. There was a bunch of mold. He had parked it in like a snowbank apparently, I would guess, from how much mold damage there was. Like the inside was just totally wrecked and uh, I managed to pull out that stuff. I cleaned it with a solution of vinegar and I used some lavender oil and that thankfully got everything out. But like every surface that could have it, like the walls had mold, the seat belts had mold, the carpet in the cab had mold. It was just disastrous. Um, I know there were a few other things. There were other things. It smelled like dog pee, and um, <laughs> yeah, he had left garbage in it. It was just like a bad purchase, but I decided that I was going to be able to put in some work, and I did end up getting a big refund check from the guy, so that was good. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise, but I guess my advice for you would be always check it out first. Take the car purchase very seriously, take it to a mechanic, have them check it out. This is probably basic wisdom, but I learned the hard way. I trusted this guy and eBay said that they weren't going to help me because it was a car purchase that was over 10 years old and PayPal said they weren't going to help me because it was a car purchase at all. So apparently these companies don't back you up and I finally called my credit card company and I said I used you guys and my bank was able to say we're going to help you out, we're going to like put in this big case for you and we need all this evidence and I told the guy that, I said I'm about to file <laughs> against you because of this and I'm going to get a full refund and you're going to have to come pick up your crappy RV and that scared him enough to send me a check. So yeah, I got a discount RV and I'm fixing it up slowly but surely. We replaced a bunch of spark plugs, we replaced the coolant, the oil. I've had a bunch of repairs and slowly but surely it's getting better and just as an example there are all these tubes there are maybe 20 or so tubes that we replaced in the engine things that take like the air from this place to this place and whatnot and um, each one of them looked like it was from the 70s or the 80s it was just holes and rips in the tubes and obviously that was causing the intake to be really really labored and it was taking in air the RPMs were too high, and so it did not pass smog for that reason, so I've just been having to deal with all of that. The other weekend, I drove it to a campsite, and I emptied out the gray water and the black water septic system for the first time. It wasn't that bad. Uh, <laughs> this older gentleman, hi Don, you're never going to see this ever, but thank you so much, you helped me immensely. He offered to just like walk me through it, and he had so much patience and so much kindness, and now I know how to do it forevermore. I'm thankful for him because I was feeling very overwhelmed when I got there and I had to do this by myself. So it's a process, it's a big commitment, but I think it's worth it if you're planning on being on the road. I've always wanted to drive across the country. I thought that that would be a great endeavor and I have all this stuff. I don't want to put it in a storage unit. I don't have any place to leave it. So I'm going to downsize what I have, pick out the most important things and take them with me. I'm going to be driving around with my seeds, my kombucha, my art supplies, my tools. I just have to find a way to make it work. I have to be very organized and diligent about not accumulating more. I have to purge, and it's very cleansing. And so that's the process of the RV. You just expect to do a lot of maintenance constantly. Stuff goes wrong. You have to fix it. You have to spend a lot of money, but then again, you don't have rent. So the idea is I'm going to be setting off on this farm excursion and it's going to be a huge adventure. I'm going to go from state to state. People maybe will recommend this place and say, oh, the land is so fertile and the growing season is great and, you know, there aren't a lot of regulations about agriculture. And I'll check that place out and then I'll decide I love it or it's not right for me. And I'm going to go from state to state checking things 
maybe I'll see some land on the internet that's for sale, I'll be able to drive there and check it out in person. I'll be able to talk to people, spend a few seasons in that place, see if it's right for me, do soil testing. So I used to really want to jump the gun. I thought that I could just find a cheap piece of land and commit to it and make it work, you know, for several thousand dollar investment, just try to make it work. And I've come to see that that is not the right way for me to do this. I need to really put in the time and check things out beforehand, not rush into anything, try to find the best thing and not commit to anything before I've thoroughly researched it. So the plan just is to keep working, keep saving, try to build homesteading and keep making videos, launch the Kickstarter at some point and hope to crowdsource this entire farm. I am going to be taking in donations and giving out small rewards like seeds, t-shirts, uh, documentary prizes for the documentary that I'm going to be making that shows and documents all of this entire process. So I know that was a bunch, a bunch of things to be putting on you. It was kind of heavy, but the RV is going pretty well. I'm happy with it. And what else to say? I guess the challenges now are figuring out the storage situation keeping it really well maintained so it's a reliable, steady, <laughs> good thing to take it out on the open road. I'm a little bit nervous, but the more time I spend with it, the more I'm learning about how to fix it, this is what it needs, anticipating problems, maybe you know replacing all of the headlights at once even though they don't need it. It's just something to get done now so you don't have to deal with it later, things like that trying to put on my big girl pants and take care of things that aren't fun. They're not glamorous. They're going to cost money, but it's good to get everything taken care of. And who knows? Hopefully, you know, as soon as possible, I will be on the land and I'll be waking up when I want to, planting amazing amounts of stuff, and I'll be able to show you guys all of this. I will be able to take in rescue animals and try to implement some of this knowledge that I have and then also just... I would like to revolutionize this entire thing. I would just like to get the land, have people, have it be this communal process, and it's an intentional community where I'm taking all the best ideas from everyone, and I'm able to house people, feed people, employ people. I'm able to teach, and we can have these classes, and also online, just showing people when to grow, what you're harvesting, how to save seeds, how to be genetically modified free, how to implement all this stuff in your own backyard with limited space, limited resources, limited budget, limited sun, everything. I'm just, I'm so excited about all of this and my motivation is still here. I just need to keep working, doing what I'm doing, keep learning. I signed up for classes. I told you guys about that. I officially am enrolled for I think 13 units of classes either 13 or 14, and I've got a bunch of things that have to do with soil management, construction, um, landscape horticulture, plant identification, all this stuff that I'm really interested in. It's going to be really fun, and of course I'll tell you more about it later. So that is my update. I will be doing more of these. If you have any questions that you want to ask, I can try to fit them into the next video. I like this. I don't have to think about anything. You guys just ask me questions and I rant at you, and that's it's effective. Okay, so that's the stuff with the RV and the farm and the future of the page, and I hope you're having an awesome week, and I will talk to you soon.